Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about a video series that Rudy from Alpha Investments made as probably one of his first and only semi-complete video series he made and it was about opening a game store. He mentions many times you should not do it, you should not do it, but I assumed that it did not apply to me because I operate a very not a very, but I operate a successful marketing agency and we, in terms of revenue, profit, everything is pretty good. The workers are happy and it's stable. Uh, it's so, in fact, it's so stable. The graphic designer uh, married the developer. Uh, they were married and now they have two kids and they don't, they don't concern themselves about whether or not we're going to be operational because they trust they trust the company, which is saying a lot because I don't know if I trust the company and I own the company. So, but anyway, they have a lot of faith. Uh, our workers have been with us for a long time. Uh, seven years was uh, Norman and five or six years, oh, almost six years was our graphic designer and our head developer. And Jess, who is our quote newest employee has been with us for almost four years. So, the agency is doing well. Um, we're having a good time, and it's just like a group of friends. Just imagine a group of friends. So I assume that if we take the same team, or we hired one more individual, we helped said individual, him or her, learned you know about digital marketing. We could teach them how to do e-commerce. We could teach them uh, a lot of really great stuff, um, and then they would sit at the store and sell magic cards physically and or um, be able to uh, do the social media, do you know the YouTube videos, which I was a very big component of. Obviously, you've seen many individuals attempt to make YouTube videos in this channel. Um, and then that way it would work. And I assumed, so in 2017, December 2017, we tried it with another individual. The individual was exactly the opposite of someone who you would want as part of your team. And on top of that, you, we, our distributor was just a mess. We were paying close to retail on retail products, which is obviously a disaster um, if you're trying to sell your products for cheaper than Walmart, right? If your competition is Walmart and you're buying the pack for way more than Walmart is, you're going to lose. Uh, you're going to lose money. So we started this new company off really and i did watch all rudy's videos um at the time i now i did make the mistake i should have uh called him paid him some type of consulting fee to ask him you know the actual details one of the things that always struck me especially when you go back to my videos and you go over my videos on my other channel where i talk about opening a magic store as strange was he doesn't have an employee and the reason that you normally have employees is because to take care of the day-to-day -day task. So if you assume Rudy's time is more valuable, then let's say, let's assign him a value for his time of, uh, again, this might offend him, but just for simple math, $100 an hour. Well, if he can pay someone to do it for $15 an hour, what you know is he's doing on a day-to-day -day basis, then he theoretically would be making $85 an hour. He would be saving that amount of time because then he could go off and sell restaurant equipment or whatever, buy reserve list cards and make $100 an hour that way while still having a store that will be profitable. So I never understood why he didn't have an employee. Um, it's my understanding he does not have an employee but again i should have called him to verify if this was true uh, one of the things uh, that about me is i have certain beliefs and those beliefs as if you follow this channel are very in stone one of them is that people don't really change um, circumstances change your ability to uh, display your characteristics which i so if you're, if I'm 31, I have 31 years of bias, life experience, and 31 years. So how difficult is it to change my perspective and, you know, just having a conversation with you for one hour, I find it very difficult to imagine I can, you will change some of my core life beliefs in one hour, which have been established through experience and bias for over 31 years, right? That's just what I, I feel. 
Now, the other thing that kind of kept the store from operating is really the uh, most taxing part is we pay uh, $15 an hour. We ran it for 60 hours a week. So you're paying $900. You're paying a minimal $900. And if you throw in overhead, I would say $1.300 in overhead, $1,200 not including the money so that twelve hundred dollars is overhead and that doesn't include your inventory money so let me repeat that again twelve hundred dollars a week doesn't include your inventory almost 5k a month and just overhead costs non-inventory so it's not including what you spend on buying the product so if you spend five thousand dollars and your margins are around thirty percent um you need it's five thousand to divide by thirty percent which I'm going to just round it to 33%. Uh, you're going to need to sell $15,000 a product a month to break even. $15,000 a product a month to break even. That's 5,000 booster packs. Right? 5,000 booster. That's revenue that you need to sell. So are you going to be able to do that easily in my location? No. So my, I always knew that the location was bad and I was okay with it because I assumed that we would move the majority of our product online. Uh, and this involves someone else doing the work, the Mercario, Facebook, Marketplace, uh, eBay, TCG Player. I assumed that that's what was going to happen, that 90 to 95% of our product would move online. But when a person that you have... Um, uh, employed cannot do that and she's not promoting videos or you know I assume that we would sell some on YouTube and Patreon and things of that nature and I wouldn't have to uh, micromanage I hate micromanaging so problem one I have a core belief that as of 2019 given inflation no one should make less than $15 an hour um, that is the living standard I don't think that you can live independently not living at your parents' basement for, uh, if you make less than $15 an hour. And part of that is I think you have to give people a way to retire. You have to give people – you have to – I wouldn't hire someone that I didn't think could be here for 20 years. Now, have I made mistakes? Yes, I've made massive mistakes in – in terms of uh, not doing background checks, in terms of hiring the wrong people. Uh, we have iPads missing. We have an iPad lost, quote, lost, but I'm pretty sure I know who took it. And lots of other really just uh, crazy stuff um, happens when, again, because when you hire someone, when you interview them, obviously they are going to put their best foot forward when they interview, and then um, if you hire someone at these kind of lower wages, they have family issues. Maybe they live in a trailer park. Uh, maybe they were a gas station cashier and they live with four other people. Um, maybe they have like a lot. I mean, you don't take a job for $10 or $15 an hour and live in a home, in a $400,000 home, right? That doesn't make sense. You wouldn't be able to pay your mortgage. So maybe you're more akin to um, taking stuff and stealing and lying because that's how you have to survive. I think that is, in many cases, um, the truth is that sometimes in the bad circumstances, you have to do, th do things you wouldn't do in a good circumstance. Um, and, I, and that's, you know, that's given the fact that we've hired a lot of people without college education um, who, you know, have children and you know they have other things that i can't imagine because i was very blessed i don't realize i'm very blessed i went to nyu i went to william mary law school i live in a home i own a business i don't have student loans i am blessed but not everyone has the same blessings as i do so maybe their choices their decisions to are different so i would never steal because what's the point of stealing um there's no point. I can just buy. I can buy in volume for discounted. I can buy more discount products cheaper than it would. It's no point in me stealing a pack or two when the difference of $2.25 actually is equivalent to 200 packs to me because of the volume I personally buy. But maybe somebody at, you know, we all, I always read articles about people stealing from Target and Walmart and putting like booster packs down their pants and stuff and underwear 
and maybe that to them is um, an addiction and they don't have the money to buy. But back to my point about the um, discussion I'm trying to have about the store. You can argue all you want with me about the margins and numbers, but I do data. I, I digest data for a living, and I have data from two different stores. Uh, one of them was a very big magic center, and they recently got rid of it because of the math. The math didn't pencil. Um, the, they were a WPN store. They had 120, 150 people at every pre-release. And they had 50 people, 40 to 50 people minimal at all the Friday Night Magic events. And they couldn't turn a profit on Magic. So they just gave up Magic. They said, we don't want to do it anymore. Um, and then there's other smaller stores that have bankrupt. Uh, the fastest way to going belly up is carrying Magic products. Um, that's just data. I'm going to have a long data video on my other channel. My other channel is about two months in advance. So maybe that video, that video has already been made. It's just not been published yet about the profitability of magic. Uh, it's been not published because I didn't know if I wanted to continue to carry magic. I will tell you, I'm going to continue to do anime figures uh, 100%. I'm going to continue to do Pokemon. I may not continue with magic. Um, the reason I'm continuing with Pokemon is that the consumer doesn't expect that much from you. Um, it's possible just to be your neighborhood Pokemon store and then moms will come in and buy some Pokemon product. And, you know, so it's not never dead inventory because a Pikachu card for many children is the same as the most valuable card in the set. Actually, Pikachu might sell in terms of volume much more than the highly played cards. But Magic, it's all about expected value and investment opportunities and all this stuff. But when you're like a little 10 years old, you're not going to worry about that stuff. And especially if you're the parent of a 10 year old, that stuff is not like, oh, I, I'm buying this product because I hope it retains value. I'm buying some boxes of Conspiracy Take the Crown because I'm hoping it retains value in over the next 10 years. No, they don't worry about that. And you don't need to give them space. Um, you don't need to give the little kid space. What they do is they come in the store, they buy their Pokemon product, and they leave. It's happened within 15 minutes. There's not much of a, you know, hey, you know, I want to buy this single. Hey, you don't have this single. Hey, I want to sell you this card for TCG Mids. There's not like this nickel and diming that goes along with Magic. Um, I think Magic players are trained, and as am I to so i'm no different to nickel and dime you to death and it's just like okay this is not fun and uh i'm actually not making that much money to begin with so thank you for uh trying to sell me things at retail and pokemon is very simple i want this card i want this card i want to get this set okay cool and it's not like even the most popular cards that sell. It's not the most expensive cards that sell. It's the Pikachus, the Squirtles, the Totodiles. Like, you can have a really good time buying bulk Pokemon cards. And you can take them home. And they're still worth bulk. You're not looking for like that reserve list card that spiked that's now worth 20 bucks in a card store's bulk list, right? Like, that feels bad when I had to sell. It shouldn't feel bad because I've done it many times, but it feels bad when someone finds like a uh, mana severance was a, it went from like no bulk, which I thought it was a common when I first saw it, but then the guy took out 20 copies of it and I had to sell it to him for 10 cents a piece, but it turned out later it was 10 bucks, but you know, that doesn't feel good. That's probably never going to happen with a Pikachu, right? Like, oh, hey, look at this Pikachu. No, the people, because they're not buying 20 copies of the same Pikachu. They want different Pikachus. Um, even if there's 20 copies of a $20 Pikachu, they're just going to take one because they're little kids. They don't. They just want the Pikachu. Uh, the anime pluses are selling well. I mean, um, honestly, everything, even the tins. I was very skeptical about these tins, but uh, people like the tins. Uh, they actually like the tins, not even the packs in the tins. The reason I was skeptical about the Pokemon tins was the packs in these Pokemon tins, the tins I have are older, and I don't like the packs in them. They're like really bad packs, but the tin itself, especially if it has an Eevee Lucent on it, like a Flareon, a Vaporeon, I mean, they sell like hotcakes. Like you can't, the Machamp tin is the worst. 
Gyarados is pretty bad too, and Gengar is pretty bad. But the other, the EV Lucens are just uh, incredibly uh, good at selling out. So uh, Alpha Investments, now that I rewatched his video, so I watched his videos a second time having owned this store, and there's a lot of stuff that now makes sense to me um, that didn't initially make sense at the time when I first watched the video before really investing in the store. Uh, doing a store is, you should never go into the store thinking that um, you're going to make money or you're even going to break even. You should do it only if you're okay with losing money. And I thought I was okay with that. I thought based on my um, financials, I was okay with losing large chunks of money for a large amount of time. But uh, there's other stuff that matters, right? So if you're sacrificing your other business to fund this business, then your workers at the other business, the successful business, are going to ask, why don't we get more bonuses? Why don't? Why are we funneling money on this failed project? And in fact, they actually will vehemently dislike that one worker who's working in the magic store because they view her or him into her um, as you know the cause of less bonuses or less um, stability. So you cannot tie two businesses together because the people working at the other business is going to, they understand that they are funding this business that is failing here because how can they not? It's the same location. Like uh, we are renting from a dentist office. It used to be a dentist office. We remade it. I'm trying to get out the lease right now. But the front of, so you know how a dentist office has a waiting room? So the waiting room is actually the magic store. And then the back where, you know, there's a door, there's soundproof um, walls is the marketing agency. So the marketing agency is separate from the store. And obviously the employees come from the back of the agent. So they don't actually have to see the store if they don't want to. But uh, it is hard. It is hard to kind of ignore that this thing is uh, eating up all your money, right? <laughs> like pretty much. And eating up all the time of your boss, who is now not focused on focusing on getting new clients, but trying to make that sure that we don't go belly up because of the store. So financially, um, our CPA said that we will be okay for one year. And financially, I think that would be true. But um, I don't know if I'm going to continue it for that long. Um, previously, I had said until my birthday, uh, I then I would just close down the store. I might. Uh, the anime store, I'm very happy with. I'm very pleased with the anime store. I just picked up a Aniplex uh, Istar, some more. and I picked up a bunch of fake Grand Order figures, and they're beautiful, and they're gorgeous. The Pokemon store, I'm very happy with, just because um, things that I didn't believe would sell are selling. And I'm just like, wow, I don't know who would buy this, but <laughs> people are buying it. Uh, the magic store i'm very disappointed in um, i don't think it can last for a very long time um, i think i don't see it hitting profitability but at the same time i don't want to not give it a chance because um, maybe it will surprise me just like the pokemon like the pokemon surprised me that was surprising that people actually wanted to buy these tins um i mean i don't know who, who's buying this stuff but they're buying it um but the magic store when I watched Rudy's uh, videos about it, there's a lot of stuff that I wish he had added. And I'm sure that like if I had called him, paid him a consulting fee, he would have told me in, in more detail. But it's a good video series to watch. Um, and it's intriguing in terms of... I had many questions of certain things that he... Certain ways that he did things, right? Um, and as my store continued... He's a smart guy. He understands business. I think there were things that could have been clarified or more elaborate that would have explained why he did made certain choices for his store and his business. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I would have been happy paying him a consulting fee uh, to advise on it. And I think if I had the real truth from him, I would have saved quite a bit of money. But regardless, we're down the rabbit hole. Um, how long we stay down in this uh, rabbit hole will depend on, I guess, um, just my day-to-day -day feelings. It really, it truly is day-to-day. -day. So I am glad I opened a store because that was on my bucket list of items. I never specified how long I should have the store open, 
but I assumed it would be for a year. Now I'm assuming it's for half a year. Now, you know, uh, we might not, I mean, I don't know. I mean, my birthday makes sense for me to close the store on, but um, if there was some like other like indicator that we were not doing well or that we were doing well, I would keep it for uh, over a year if by my birthday it was actually break even. Now we did reduce our cost a lot because we no longer have a full-time worker. So cost has been reduced significantly, which is helpful, but at the same time, like how significant, I mean, at the same time, even after you reduce that large cost, and it is a large, large, large cost because it takes us down from 1200 a week down to 300 a week. But there is our own time being applied as well. Um, you might see Jess in a video very soon. Um, which reminds me, subscribe to my other channel. Uh, some things I need to say is uh, I have been slighted many times by the Houston Social Media Society, which is ironic because they had me speak at their second annual event. And I have not been put on their top 100 list, even though I have a LinkedIn that it's much bigger than all of their LinkedIn. And I have actual engagement. So what's the use of having 100,000 YouTube subscribers if not one of them watches your video? And that's what I think a lot of people in Houston, these uh, quote 100 top 100 social media specialists have uh, fake accounts, fake bots, and uh, all this stuff. So I need your help creating this YouTube channel, making it as big as possible, so then I can basically go to war. Like, I don't know if there's another way to say it, but I want to call these people out, but I can't just call them out on my LinkedIn profile alone. I need a second, I can't be a one-trick pony. I need a second source, which hopefully will just be this YouTube channel. So please, please help me grow that channel. Bye, guys.